Aloha and welcome to Ehana Kako. We're here every week on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute, where we like to say Ehana Kako, and that means let's work together. In fact, there could be nothing more valuable here in beautiful paradise, especially for those people in paradise who don't experience as much of it as they should. Many of us take for granted that we can have three meals a day and that we can send our children off to school with full bellies and uh, they'll come back and they'll have a dinner. But the reality is a growing segment of our population can't make that assumption. They don't necessarily know where the next meal is and that could lead them into a cavalcade that results in becoming homeless and other problems that ultimately not only are harmful to them and their children but to all of society. And that's why I'm so delighted today to have two gentlemen with me who are doing something about it. They're not saying, let's sit back and let the government take care of it, although they do work with the government. They're saying, let's, let's work together with the private sector, with nonprofit organizations, with charities, with faith-based groups, in order to come up with a solution for an important need here in Hawaii, and that is getting enough food into our people, nutritious food, meals that will actually sustain them and keep them from becoming homeless. Today, I'm delighted to be with Feeding Hawaii Together, a board member, Gil Berger, and Charlie Lorenz, their executive director. And we're going to talk a bit about this problem that they're solving. And I want you to pay attention all the way through the end, because as viewers who care about the future of Hawaii and its people, there's something that you can do. But please welcome to the program today, Gil Berger. Gil, welcome to the program. Thank Thanks you for, being for having here. us on the show. Well, I'm Very glad much, to be here. And Thank you. Charlie, so glad you're here, too, as Thank well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Well, you're doing a great it. work, and I want to congratulate you. But we, I don't think everybody knows about your work. We, we know about what it is to feed people who are homeless, but you're doing something that is actually very proactive. Tell us what Feeding Hawaii Together does. We're a nonprofit, and our focus is preventing homelessness. So we are a food pantry, but we are a food pantry unique in that we're actually a little grocery store for these people. So Charlie and his wonderful bride, Diane, are have developed a model where these people come in and they shop. Well, how about that? That's, in, that's incredible. They, it is. So they come in. Now, do they pay for what they purchase? Or? No. There's no charge for anything that we provide. The food comes from the food bank, and the food bank does not distribute food directly to people. Some people think they do, but it's places like Feeding Hawaii Together and other food distribution points that actually are distributing the food to people. Now I understand that you are probably one of the largest distributors of food that Food Bank makes available, is that right? That is correct, over three million pounds of food a year. And was it correct, uh, at least a couple of years ago, I saw in the news that Food Bank had a problem finding distributors and much of the food would actually go to waste. Yes. So you're, you're solving a couple of problems here. Absolutely, and Charlie and Diane over the years have matured this model to the point where we have in-house refrigeration and freezers. So beside the food bank, we have Aloha Harvest and a number of organizations that bring fresh food in, fruits, vegetables, eggs, dairy products. So it's not just the canned staple food. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah, it's you very nutritious food multiply. they're receiving at the, the same the time. Effect. Now, Charlie, who is your client? Who exactly do you serve? Uh, what, tell me a little bit about the people that you provide food to. Okay. <clears throat> Our clients have to be um, in uh, USDA standards of poverty level. And like, for instance, if somebody has food stamps, they qualify. All right. Because that's an automatic qualification. And um, so there's a sliding scale, like, like uh, if a single person is shopping, they want to come in and shop. and and um, their income is less than $23,000 or so, then, um, then they can come in. We, we've, 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 we have um, had uh, uh, USDA people come in and, and talk to us and everything. So we, we told them that, you know, we do fudge a little bit. We're not, we're not like, like to the penny, you know what I mean? So if people are close into that, and so, so it's 23000 for for a single person, and it, there's a sliding scale that goes up to to a family of eight. Now, a family of eight can earn 
a little bit, very close to uh, $80,000, $86,000. Sure. Which really doesn't go that far for a no, family of really. eight in Hawaii. It doesn't. It doesn't go anywhere, not in, really. not in Hawaii, no. And a lot of these people, you know, that when, when, when um, they... They, they, when we don't have the the means to give them their food, um, you know they're 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 they're, they're having a dilemma whether they they, they uh, buy food or pay rent. That's right. Now, feeding Hawaii together reaches out to well over fifty thousand people. Is that yes. am I reading your statistics right F over here? Fifty thousand families. Fifty thousand families. Yes, sir. That's incredible. So we're talking yes. about one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand people altogether, possibly. Yes. Th that's something, you know. To tell me a little bit, Charlie, about who these people are. Not statistically, but so something you've learned. You and your wife Diane have been reaching out to them. You've been leading your staff. You see them every day. Who are they? What are they like? They're just normal people that that are just not doesn't have a. <clears throat> a uh, nutritious meal every day and um, <clears throat> like you, you hit the nail on the head when you opened up because uh, there's a lot of people that that they, they come home the kids go don't get a breakfast for school they don't have any food when they come home and it's it's very challenging and um, a Gil was, was saying t talking about our relationship with Hawaii Food Bank well um, right now, as as you know, that our building is is shut down, and um, we're we're seeking another building. But um, but so so right now, these people are really in dire straits. Wow! And you, yeah. you're, you're performing such an important service, and I, I hope before the program is over, you'll tell us more about where you are in terms of the need of getting another building. But yeah. let me go back to Gil for a moment over mm -hmm. here. Gil, you've been a businessman here in the islands for many, many years, and you've had mm -hmm. some prominent positions. You've worked on banks and so forth. You've seen government efforts to solve the problem of homelessness, but it, it mm -hmm. sounds to me as though you're starting a step before that. You're, you're reaching out through this organization to people before they're homeless to, f to address a critical need of theirs before it sends them into homelessness. That's exactly it, and the, the passion to serve those, to prevent them from going into homelessness. And in addition to the food pantry concept that Charlie and Diane have developed, they have other services that come in and are there every day the pantry was open. They're there, they're present. Government services, partners in development, education, they have health services. So. The food pantry is the primary function of Feeding Hawaii Together, but the other agencies understand what we do and they understand that most of these people are right on the edge. So collectively, we're preventing more homelessness in Hawaii. So having, a, phys having a physical structure, having a premise, is absolutely essential then to bringing together not only the, the food provided, but the other services. It, it yes. becomes a, mm -hmm. like a community center, if you will. Absolutely, it does. It comes very much like a community center. And I love the stories that Charlie can tell you more of, but you know, my, one of my favorite ones is a gentleman who would be coming in to try to get food, and he would be very rambunctious and sometimes use some language that was not too acceptable. And one day, Charlie saw him on the sidewalk and stopped and talked to him. And he eventually was encouraged to come back but conduct himself in a proper manner. And eventually, completely work through getting enough food, getting through the services he needed to no longer be homeless. Well, it's wonderful to hear so, about the collaboration that, that's taking place with multiple organizations. Charlie, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about some of the partners that are, are taking advantage of what you're doing in order to provide a broader range of services than simply distributing food. Yeah, Helping Hands Hawaii mm -hmm. comes in, we give them a table, and um, you know, nonprofit organizations, as long as they're not charging for, any, for anything, you know, that, that's, that's what we do. And um, uh, so, so there's um, um, volunteer legal services, there's IHS, IHS comes in with, for employment, and um, and Helping Hands Hawaii does um, food stamps. That that's a, a very uh, intricate 
key to the whole thing because um, <clears throat> even though they can shop once a week and pick out the food that they want, they don't always get enough. And um, you know, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to make sure that these people get enough food that a gainfully employed person had or has, you know. And, um, and a lot of them are employed. So it's, it's, it's really uh, um, uh, 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 a very important need. But um, um, so there's, there's uh, uh, volunteer legal services, IHS comes down with, with uh, employment, and then, and then um, different, different agencies like, like uh, um, uh, Blue Jay cell phones. Blue Jay cell phones is is um, is is there and it's for free phone, so they get a, they get a free phone. They have to be poverty level, so they're already shooed in on that. You know when they're when they're shopping, we already know they're in poverty level, and um, so they provide a phone that that gives you 700 minutes, and if the phone if they if they use the 700 minutes, it's only talk and text. If they use the 700 minutes, the phone just shuts down. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if within a month, and then in the first of the, of the month, they, then it, they, they load back up again. Now, do some of these providers, uh, these collaborators, seek you out because they know of the work you're doing, or have you gone out and looked for each one of them? No, they've actually come to us because we have, we, we've had like, like up to 500 people. We, we, one, <laughs> one day last year we had 500 people that, that came through. And they're, they're have, they have grants and they have um, all kinds of different things that they need to do. And, but, but the main thing they're, they're trying to do is, is to connect to people. So, so they, they have the grants and, and, and they'll, they'll connect to the people at, at our facilities. So they're out there and, and we were, like the facility that we had was, was you know, under roof. And, um, um, for for the the waiting time, so there's there's, there's uh, it, sometimes it's two hours of waiting time, but they know it's worth it. Well, you know this is interesting to me because we're trying to deal with the problem of the spread of homelessness throughout yes. our city, our islands, and it makes it a real challenge to, uh, when it comes to getting services to people. Yes. Service providers have to go far and wide in order to encounter the those who are in greatest need. But yes. it seems, Gil, that uh, one of the advantages of having a facility is that it becomes a magnet for service providers. It, it, almost uh, lis listening to you, Charlie, the, the mere fact that you bring the people together is something that charities and service providers and agencies find of great value. Very much so. And why we primarily are a food pantry that distributes food to people it's still the whole family trying to put all the things that that family needs so that's to great. prevent them from becoming homeless. We're going to go to a break now, but before we do, mm -hmm. I, I want you to let our viewers know something that's happened, that despite the 15-year stellar record of your work that reaches mm -hmm. out to over 50,000 families, you're facing a, a bit of a crisis now. What's that? Absolutely. We have a serious crisis in that we've been uh, forced to vacate the building in which we were occupying and serving all these wonderful folks. Uh, it was sold and we were told we had to move out, which we did. So we are currently without a home. So, so we are pursuing a new location uh, with a lot of energy uh, and seeking guidance and help from anyone in the community to uh, support us in securing a new location. Well, when we come back from our break, we're going to talk about that a bit. You, you're, you're listening to Gil Berger and to Charlie Lorenz of Feeding Hawaii Together. They're doing a terrific work along with other people. But as you heard, this work that has gone on for 15 years is facing a crisis, and they desperately need a facility at which to continue carrying on their work. We'll hear more about that when we get back. I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroots Institute. You're watching a Hana Kapko on the Big Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. 
Aloha, my name is Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. on ThemeTech, we host the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We like to bring in folks from the whole realm of the local food supply and agriculture, anyone working on these issues, any organization or individual that has plans or projects. What kind of people have we had on? Uh, so we've had farmers, we've had chefs, we've had people from government, uh, larger institutions, everyone who's working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So you can see us every Thursday and join the conversation on Twitter, and we hope to see you there. Three. Welcome back to Ehana Kapo. We're here every week on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network, and I'm Kaylee Akino with the Grassroots Institute. Well, feeding Hawaii together, uh, what could there be as a greater goal for us as a people to come together, private sector, public sector as well, and this is being done by this great organization, but they're facing a problem now. What basically you've told me, Gil and uh, Charlie, is that you no longer have a building from which to operate this fabulous work. Correct. How much space do you actually need, uh, either one of you, in order to carry out the work? Charlie? 10,000 square feet would be really good but we could we could fit in something um, I, I hate to say six but somewhere six or seven so ten thousand square feet or or somewhat less uh, describe the kind of building and the kind of location that that might be suitable to this uh, industrial you okay, know it could be in the industrial area yeah anywhere it could be it pretty pretty much anywhere we want to we want to try to stay you know, somewhere around Sand Island to uh, Kakaako, something like that, or Mapuna Puna. Would bus access be an important thing? Yes, it is. Very that that is, you, you just hit the, the nail on the head. Bus bus access because the senior citizens pay fifteen dollars a year uh -huh. to to get a bus pass, and that bus pass gives them bus access all year, and and that's that's a really key point. And, uh, but also, bef you know, the, the reason why we need such a, a bigger building is because we give away food, we give away appliances, we give away furniture, and um, so many different um, items. You know, we, we, we've had, we've had uh, stories that, you know, uh, you know that, uh, that, that just would, would blow your mind, you know, on, on certain things, you know, so. So um, we, we had one day we, we got a call from a cruise ship, and the cruise ship, uh, they, they said that they're, they're remodeling and, and, and they're, they're, they're going to bring all the bedding out and everything like that, and so they wanted to donate to us. So, so me and my wife were, were on our way out when, when we got that call, and, and they said that I asked them would it all fit on a flatbed, and they said yes. So, so when we came back, the, the guys the guys that were doing it were, were bringing multiple loads and, well, how and, about that? and when they yeah but they filled up the mm -hmm. whole loading dock which <laughs> shuts us down <laughs> so we got really nervous but but we just started calling the managers of the of all the low-income housing and it was gone in a day so you need a substantial facility in order to yes. receive your inventory yes. yeah. and store it and yeah we, we don't want to do so just forth. food we want to give them you know the needs uh -huh, that they important. that they have. Yeah, it's it's very and important. From a business point of view, Gil, mm -hmm. what kind of return on investment is this for the person who's investing in society? I, I've heard a couple of things so far. One, it's proactive. It's it's about keeping people from becoming homeless. So yes. I can imagine that the cost saved there is phenomenal in, for it, the public. It, it is. And, and in addition to that, you, you've got the these centers of distribution for other services that are taking place simply mm -hmm. by virtue of the fact that people are coming to get the food that they want. Right. It's a, it's a difficult thing from a, from a for-profit perspective uh, and a landlord uh, today with the commercial property prices in Hawaii, it's, sure. it's a challenge. Uh, and that's why we're reaching out to the community as, as broadly as we can uh, to hopefully find an angel investor or an angel landlord that would provide a space. But I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing for Hawaii to continue to pursue uh, the concept of what's involved in what's called Housing First that was developed out of Denver originally and it's been very successful there, 
very successful in Chicago, San Diego, and the major cities in that it takes exactly what we do at Feeding Hawaii together and then enhances it with this housing first concept. And it's the mix of the public-private sector working together collaboratively That's right. and addressing all of the services that these homeless folks need uh, to get them back on their feet and get them economically sustainable. It sounds as though what your organization is providing is a, a missing piece from the matrix that we have right now. Yes. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so much going on to address the problem of homelessness. We don't de de devote our resources on preventing it to the same extent, but the kind of critical intervention that you provide, the meals that are needed to continue to keep a family going and provided for, can make such a big difference. How do you see this working with current governmental efforts? For example, the governor's commission now that, that is taking a look into homelessness solutions. I think it's a challenge uh, for us. Uh, their focus is on housing, mm -hmm. and I know that's one of the things that is critical, quite frankly, to eliminating and reducing the homeless crisis that we are, we're facing. Right. But I think they also need to take a, a much broader view uh, and look at this housing first concept because it, there's more elements to it than just the housing. It's the partnership of all the nonprofits that focus on service providing and they're coordinating all of that effort. And I think once that starts to happen, I think you'll find things like Feeding Hawaii Together that prevent homelessness and other or organizations will be successful at preventing homelessness. Well, we'd we love to see our position eliminated. We we'd love to see our absolutely. We, yeah. If if we could disappear and our need wasn't there, how wonderful that would be. That would be wonderful. <laughs> but the need is here now. It is. And, it is. and you've got an organization that has proven over 15 years that it has yes. the capacity to caring for the f food needs of 50,000 families. And that's part of the matrix already. Uh, yes. uh, it, it would seem to me that this is a very uh, readily available piece of the, the bigger puzzle that has to be solved, and, and we should try to empower that as much as possible. Now, in our homelessness community, we've seen the growth of certain uh, segments of society, the Micronesians who have come mm -hmm. here, for example, mm -hmm. or Native Hawaiians, and I could mm -hmm. go on. Homelessness is a universal problem. Poverty yes. is universal. Yes. But in some ways, you're well suited to meet, meet the needs of particular population groups, such as Native Hawaiians, as well as the general public. Do you want to address that a bit, Gil? Uh, absolutely. We, we keep very accurate records of the population that is using the facility, and we have over 1,600 Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian families. We have Micronesians. We have a broad spectrum of both racial and cultural groups that are using Feeding Hawaii together. So we're nourishing that, and that's an important factor, very important factor for us. So you're not exclusive to any one particular group, but, no, but you, no. you allow this to be a comfortable service and place where those who identify with their ethnic group can come and have, in a sense, I would guess, community experience as well. Very much so. Charlie and Diane are wonderful at that. Yeah, we have, so, we, we have, um, some, sometimes people will, will come in, you know, a, sing, a single person, and, um, you know, when they first start shopping there, the, you know, we, we want to load them up with a lot of food and get their, their, their cupboards and refrigerators and freezers all loaded up, you know. But then, that, then you end up with, with sometimes some of them will, will come in and just get five pounds of food. So they're picking what they want. When they're doing five pounds of food, they're just like coming in just to be like, like social. You know, like it's just a social thing, you know. They, they they got enough food already and stuff, you know, and it's a, so there's so many different um, angles to the whole thing. Um, one thing I, I, I would uh, like to comment on is that is that the uh, um, Hawaii Food Bank is um, having to uh, even that the, the president of Hawaii Food Bank has gone on camera on this too that 
that the food, a lot of the food is getting thrown away right now. Right. And it's going into landfills. And when you, when you take fruits and vegetables and throw it in landfills and cover it with dirt, it doesn't decompose. It needs air to decompose. Mm. And so that, that's, and, and then it's, it's we're, we're a vehicle that we could, if, you know, if we have a building, we, we, that we could just go and um, move right, move, move right, right into um, capturing all that food. And, um, you know, they, they were trying to do everything that they could do, you know, for us to stay open. But Hawaii Food Bank, you know, and that's, that's our main, main partner. But um, if I could um, do a little bit of liberty. Absolutely. Okay. Please. Um, I, I hope you'll let our viewers know in the last few minutes what they can do if, if they've heard something today that touches their heart. Yeah. How can they ensure the future of, of this very important organization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so we, we started out at Teen Challenge and then we migrated over mm -hmm. to, to the Feeding Hawaii together and we, we saw that, that importance. But we, right now, if, um, where's the camera? <laughs> if, if, we, if we have 2,000 people giving $5 a month, you know, and our website, you know, can, can handle that, where you can just say a year, you can say half a year, you can say three months, you can say one time or whatever, and then if you ever get in financial trouble, then, then you can, you can take, you know, stop it and all that. But, but we've learned, you know, that in a nonprofit, doing nonprofits, that to have one person do the whole thing is, is really not something you could really t sink your teeth into because if that person goes away then we're we're, we're shut down again sure. but like five dollars a month two thousand people would get us a ten thousand square challenge. foot building can you tell us how to contact you either a website or a phone number yes feeding hawaii together dot org is is our our, our website and you can go right on there and it says, it says yeah, there it is right there saving feeding hawaii together and um, and then our phone numbers. My phone number is seven eight one two zero one eight, and my wife's phone number is seven eight zero two seven five nine. And you guys can call right. anytime you want. You know, well, so. I'm going to shake your hand, Charlie, and encourage everyone to take a look at your website and give a call. And in right. the last thirty seconds, Bill. You know, Thanks again you, for having us on our well, show. Charlie appealed to the general public. What would you say in fifteen seconds? Find us 10,000 square feet of space and uh, an angel landlord to provide that to us like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs>